impedance and power triangle. The total impedance of an AC circuit is represented by a complex number. The real part is formed by the resistor and the imaginary part is formed by the inductor or capacitor. This representation is known as the rectangular format. We can convert it to polar form using a right angle triangle called the impedance triangle. In an impedance triangle, the resistance forms the base of the triangle. The length of the base depends on the resistance value. The height edge which is perpendicular to the base represents the reactance. For inductive reactance, we drop the perpendicular down from the base while for capacitive reactance, the perpendicular is drawn upwards. The hypotenuse of the triangle is the impedance of the load. By Pythagoras theorem, we can write Z equal to square root of R square plus XL square. The impedance triangle has three edges, resistance, reactance and impedance. When we multiply the square of current to each of these terms, we get the power triangle. The product of current squared and resistance gives the actual work done and is called the active power. It is measured in watts. The product of current squared and reactance gives the reactive power. Reactive power is the power that is not converted to useful work. But that power is transferred from the source to the load during half of the time period of AC and during the other half of the time period, it is transferred back from the load to the source. So, the net transfer of reactive power during an entire cycle is zero. It is measured in volt amperes reactive or VAR. The product of total applied voltage and current through the circuit gives the power in a DC circuit. But in an AC circuit, this product is known as the apparent power of the circuit. Why is this called the apparent power? Because it seems like this is the power absorbed by the circuit. But actually, only a portion of the power, the real power, is absorbed by the circuit. Apparent power is measured in volt amperes. 